Hello, it is DBJ. Welcome to RPG with DBJ. Um, as a reference for yesterday, I don't have a bell. I need a ding, 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 ding. Bring out your dead. Bring out your dead. Bring out your dead. Okay, you guys will get that reference if you watched yesterday's video about um, world building in the age of the dark ages. But... Because I, you know, you got to preamble a little bit. We'll let, every, let everybody get in the uh, get in on the chat if they want to. Um, yesterday we talked about the the dark ages, but today, how do you classify today? Um, there's a period of time in history, and uh, let me start from the beginning. We're doing a little world building series. I guess it's kind of a, a personal challenge and a, and, a, and a weird challenge for you guys as well. But during this series of thinking about different time periods, different eras, and why would you want to role play in those eras? Basically, if you've never done it before and you're like, nah, that, that's not for me, uh, we're basically getting together for about an hour. We're all just going to talk about like, why would you want to uh, role play? Why would you want to use these settings in these different eras? Um, how could you modify them using like science fiction or fantasy or anything like that? And what really draws people to it? But this one, this particular era doesn't have a particular name. It's just funny how history has shown us that uh, despite the fact that there are some age, there's some years in, in uh, gappage um, that many of these things took place at the same time. And we're talking the age of piracy, the age of Victorian England, the age of um, the, you know, the Indian trading company. That's a bad descriptor for that. The age of the samurai, um, the age of the, the old West in America is the age of the, of the civil war um, and so many other things going on around the world all at the same time and all so exotic and all of it so um, uh, ep epitomizes an era in each of those regions around the world, yet couldn't be so different from each other in terms of their development and their impact on, on society. So, but yeah, in the beginning, um, uh, there were a couple of comments from yesterday's uh world building in the dark ages. Uh, Joseph Keenan <laughs> says, plus I wanted to say, bring out your dead. Yeah, <laughs> remember that, you know, you just, the, 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 the classic image of people walking with the barrel, um, the wagon barrel, much bigger than that, the wagon filled with the dead um, as people dragged out their dead loved ones and throw them on the, onto the wagon and such. Uh, I believe it was, was that Monty Python? Life of Brian, maybe? Ah, no, maybe not. No, no, no. It was probably uh, um, it wasn't Life of Brian. Uh, I, I, my, my, my brain's farting. Um, but yeah, there's um, uh, it talks about like when I started out talking about pigeons. And pigeons are equal source of food, messenger services, uh, source of eggs, source of feathers. Yeah, but really, pigeons are nasty. <laughs> they're they're you know pe people people love our, love ourselves some animals pigeons are pretty much at the bottom they're 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 like a step above roaches in many ways um dead man says a steampunk age yeah i mean um it's so weird how uh how we were able to there's so many role playing games that delve deep into exploring each of those ages, even those 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 ages many times overlapped each other. Um, if it says gunpowder age, I yes, yeah, I would I would say that because you know the the gunpowder age, the piracy age, the age of um, I mean, you could go to. Um, <laughs> so I was Steve Punk is probably my least favorite age. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> Dead man, the storyteller says winged rats. Yeah, pigeons are pigeons are pretty bad. Um, they're 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 kind of like the the uh, <laughs> give it a bad rap. They're like the gar flying garbage disposals, I suppose. Um, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yes, that is bring out your dead. Bring out your dead. Bring out your dead. Ding, ding. You know, um, but. What what I love, uh, what's bizarre and what I love about 
the age we're going to talk about. And I'm not sure steampunk gunpowder age, I guess, would be a good name for it. But it's it's the idea that and I'm sure there's at least one role playing game that has encompassed all of these, but I don't know the name of it. But the idea that there is uh, that you could play someone from, you know, um, ancient Japan and China, as well as play someone from uh, the same period of time from India and play someone from the same period of time from from Victorian England and play someone who is a, a pirate or someone from the old west or someone in the, you know, fighting in the Civil War in, in the Americas or being a... Um, someone from Spain or Portugal, you know, in, in invading Central America, like all of those things separately are interesting, but combining them together, it's now, uh, Joseph Keenan brings up the fact that, you know, you could take a tramp steamer and go down into deep Africa. And that's where a lot of the pulp action came from. If you think of, um, uh, the Phantom and Doc Savage. And I, I mean, I know I'm like Doc Savage might be a little for more advanced, just like he, he mentions even uh, Indiana Jones might be a little too into our modern era as opposed in the past. But that still was a thing, right? You know, they these instead of what we would consider modern day rifles, they had these uh, thunder blasts. They were just like these, you, you know, not much more than flintlocks, uh, if, if at all. And combining the two, you know, a samurai standing next to a cowboy could have been done. Now, we understand that the travel and people's insular um, or maybe even xenophobic uh, cultural norms were at the time and survival itself, right? Like, why would you want to go one place to another? But that doesn't necessarily – society – we know society and culture is never 100% one thing. Um, <laughs> Solace says the difference is that man, I want a rat, rat as a pet, not a pigeon. Um, Vince says steampunk is kind of cool if done right. I used to play a game about landing on the moon, made an RPG maker, and it was awesome. He used all of the uh, literary cliches that fit in that era. And that's where I think we can really draw some of the most exciting things. Uh, instead of falling far more towards the realism, if you go more towards the literary cliches, uh, especially like. Um, What's the, the Netflix show? Uh, it's like four seasons. Uh, Penny Dreadful was one. Um, Vincent brings up Phantom of the Opera, Frankenstein, Around the World in 80 Days, uh, Attack of the Martians, Sherlock Holmes. Um, and I, I even brought up Doc Savage, The Phantom. Uh, wow. Um, these are This is more sci-fi, but there's a, a Flash Gordon and... Um, Man, what's the other um, uh, journey to the center of the earth? And oh man, I mean, there were so many comic series. Um, uh, oh, what was the warlord dude that you that um, he was like a pilot or something? Um, and then he, he became a warlord, man. It was just like, and it was very Conan esque or something. Um, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, the invisible man. Thank you very much, there, Vince. Um, <laughs> Last Samurai, <laughs> yeah, that too. Uh, a, a lot of the pulp action too, of course, was like, you know, filled with um, manly men. Uh, oh, yes, ba the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Thank you. Um, with the the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen talking about um, Dorian Gray and, um, you know, of course, um, uh, um, Tom Sawyer and... Man, so they're they're all going through my head at the same time. Sorry, um, but the it's it's like the it is an era of technology. Yeah, Dracula and um, and, and Harkness, I believe, was her name. Um, and the 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 Alan Quatermain, Alan Quatermain, the 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 gentleman that went down into deep Africa and found all of the. You, you know, the, the 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 dark magics and things like that going down. Uh, Captain Nemo is one. Thank you, Prue. Amina uh, Harker. It was Harker. I was thinking Harkonnen. I was like, that's not Harkonnen. Um, yeah, Captain Nemo. And that whole era was just, it was like, 
we discovered technologies to rediscover the mysteries of our world. So there was a great, um, this great imperative to explore our world the way we could not explore it again. And coming out of the dark ages, it was like we wanted to rediscover things that we had lost or that we didn't know about, or um, we had new technologies now that allowed us to travel underwater, in the sky, across the land. And then, of course, we had stories that took that to another level. Um, Vincent said, yeah, great age for technological advancement and exploration. And of course, there was also, it was, strangely enough, there wasn't as much fear of the unknown. It was, not that there wasn't fear, but it was like, let's explore. There's something I don't know. I'm scared of it, but I'm not going to turn back, right? Um, yeah, it's just, and... I think that is a real part of the uh, what brings, other than the aesthetic of steampunk, I think that's really what it is. It's about being someone who's out of your element, out of your zone, being the, the European explorer going down into deep Africa where there's like other cultures. Um, and, uh, and a large part of this, of course, has to do with the fact that uh, you're, well, there's a term I'm going to butcher it again, uh, as I butcher most things <laughs> historically. But there was a time when when um, uh, England said that that everywhere the sun rose, the, the English had set down their, their flag, essentially, that there was no place in the world. And so a lot of that part of explore, exploring the world had to do with that. So it was very Euro, done from a Eurocentric ideal but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it that way exactly and of course in many of those stories they always had sidekicks right there was always like um the, the you know the the african warrior who was a sidekick or um the, the persian warrior with a, uh, a scimitar as the sidekick so you can always play those sidekicks and have those people in there um <laughs> vince says do you want to sink more ships mr anderson my name is Nemo. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Mixing um, um, Matrix, Matrix, and uh, and uh, Captain Nemo, and and of course there was always this in the background because this was the same era, of course, as the stories, uh, the Cthulhu stories as well, and many of these stories, as we describe them today not only had to do with exploring the dangers of the world, um, Indiana Jones style, right? Jungles, deserts, um, Arctic, um, going into, uh, into deep dungeons and exploring these great worlds with these other cultures and, and having, you know, gunfights and spears thrown at you and, and being shot with poison darts and stuff like that and traps and all. Not only that, but there was also an internal danger that we did want to explore, but we better be careful because we might uncover something that we shouldn't. Uncovering the mummy's tomb, um, uncovering some uh, dark cult summoning Cthulhu and driving you insane, um, being tempted by dark magics in these other places. And so combining like the beginnings of technology and, and such, it says, yeah, well, um, imagine living in a world where you can go anywhere, but nothing is really explored yet. And this was our, I, I believe this era was our way of exploring the world um, in, in such ways that we couldn't do it before. Um, base, in, essentially, we had the ability to survive in these locations in a way we couldn't survive there, right? With food and bringing supplies and having compasses and limited technology with maybe like um, Morse code or something, you know, those kind of things. Uh, Vince brings up space 1889, going to other planets. That was an idea as well. Um, you know, <laughs> Dead Man, the storyteller says, watch out for the Ark of the Covenant. And that was the idea, right? You know, many people not complain, they compare, um, Indiana Jones, that he really didn't do anything because the Ark of the Covenant, once they found the Ark, the evil guys found the Ark of the Covenant, opened it up, boom, you know, they, they got their faces melted, right? So 
it's sure you can try to discover things, but even in Indiana Jones, it was all about protecting history and protecting the cultures that he came across, you know, keeping it out of the hands of people who, who have nefarious ideas on what to do with it. Um, Vince says, yeah, imagine finding those ancient magic items, maybe the real one, the only real ones um, in existence and using those things as well, right? Like, are, is it, are they dangerous to use? Or do they have a corrupting influence? Um, remember, we, we this was a, bringing back the idea of instead of the Wolfman, there was the Frankenstein's monster or Dr. Jekyll. Um, in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, they all had dark, thi dark things. Um, Alan Quartermain had a um, opium heroin addiction. Um, Mina Harker was drawn to the dark side because of her connection with and being bitten by... Um, Dracula and having that thing. If you watch the show Penny Dreadful, you know, there was um, uh, one of the main characters was a werewolf and he was always afraid of, you know, it was literally the full moon. I'm going to go berserk and kill everybody kind of thing. Um, so I, it's the, the internal where I believe in this era, you could really play up your game system having weaknesses, characters having a power and a weakness attached to their abilities to do it. Um, I, I would say an example would be the the spirit medium that has to watch out or they lose themselves in their magics. Um, the 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 samurai warrior who has for maybe has dishonored his family but has left and is now known as this great warrior to everybody else, but internally is like, you know, I need to redeem myself. Um, that kind of thing. Azala says, go explore South America, find out about the Aztecs, worship Cthulhu's younger brother. Also, there's a path to the center of the earth with dinosaurs. Uh, Jack Black time traveled back. Jack Black time traveled. There. Yeah, but I mean, that's the thing, right? Center of the earth travel and using dinosaurs. I mean, this it's weird. I know I use the word gonzo a lot, but it's like this weird chaos of you're bringing your own culture with you and then you you're you're just being punched in the face with some place that's nothing like where you came from. Vince says, this reminds me of where Warehouse 13. I remember that show. Um, the basic idea is that some extraordinary items exist. You have to collect them to keep humanity safe. Could e easily be brought in that age. That's a, that's a perfect example of like why travel in the first place? Because, you know, people that were fighting in the Civil War, the Old West, or the Age of Piracy, or Victorian England, or ancient um, uh, India or deepest Africa or, you know, China or something didn't, you, you get this idea they didn't travel very much because of the, the problems they, you know, they already had a ton of stresses living in their own cultures going outside of it. But then again, as technology grew, as populations grew, um, people were being forced out of where they lived, i.e. Uh, settling Australia. And so ma what makes a gr that makes a great idea that these ancient artifacts, you could take them from from real life, like, uh, you know, real life artifacts that we know of or make up your own. And then there's this great you could have a ship where this ship has gone around and, and kind of adopted a crew from all these vast different cultures and then making them up. That'd be that would be kind of sweet for someone to play someone from like Mongolia and someone else from like South Africa and then someone else from Central America um, and then someone else from like the, you nor northern Europe, you know, like and just playing all these different people at the same time. Um, Jet Black was an amazing jetpack. <laughs> that was a little, little further than the technology that we want, but yeah. Um, oh, what's the um, the movie? Um, wow, with the jetpack. Um, Steven Spielberg, somebody's gotta let me know that. Um, oh, The Librarian, uh, Azala says Vincent, or The Librarian was a great show that, had, that dealt with that. Um, uh, Pru Pru says, uh, I, "I generally really like Gothic pulp literature as inspiration. A lot of a lot of that pulp literature really dealt with it. Thank you, the Rocketeer. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, a lot of that dealt with like a singular explorer with a couple of um, uh, friendly sidekicks and this desire to go out and find these ancient things or ancient um, locations." And just being amazed at what they were, and of course, plenty of danger. Somebody's got to die, and um, and and it warms my heart because a lot of that also had to deal with like that exploration. The 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 classic Indiana Jones, 
you know, traps and running from things and and jumping over and having fist fights on the on the top of zeppelins or the you know having um uh punching big giant bad guys in the face while a uh, propeller plane starts circling around like I love that kind of stuff. Um, Dead Man and Storytellers says Warehouse Seven would be in the right time frame for this. Uh, predates Warehouse Thirteen. I did not know that. I did not know that. Um, but yeah, the uh, the Rocketeer, maybe the Age of Exploration might be. You know, he's you know brought up. Um, Vince talks about what we could call it, um, and I think the Age of Exploration is probably your best bet, right? And for those who may fear. Um, that one type of technology might be better than another. You know, we we role players love to, you know, bring up the idea that, uh, you know, once firearms are introduced, everything else sucks. But remember, during this age of exploration, uh, firearms went through a, a, a number of iterations before it became what we think of as fully automatic weapons, right? So, um, you could start out with very simple flintlock weapons all the way up to you know your six shooters and your long range rifles of the of the of the uh, of of the old west um uh, vince says would you build a world like um yourself but with alternate history or a new one uh, azala says alternate history i love that what if scenario um i i like well the great the great idea of using like a, an alternate history you know the alternate history of what if indigenous peoples here in America spread around the world? Or what if, you know, ancient uh, Japanese culture, they actually decided to become ex major explorers or something like that? Or what if, you know, someone opened up the Necronomicon or some, something or opened up the Book of Nod and summoned Cthulhu creatures to our world? Um, and, you know, I love the idea of what if because you you get the reference history without being um, a slave to it, which if you if you are a historian type yourself, I'm talking to you, talking about you, Joseph Keenan. Um, I, I joke with that. But if you're a really a real history buff, you could draw on those touchstones, those big uh, pivotal uh, bullet points, like one to three really big bullet points in each of these cultures and time periods around the world, and then just construct off of them without being uh, a slave to them without making it like this has to be at this time um because if we if we really did a history check like the civil war probably didn't happen exactly at the same time as the the peak piracy which didn't happen exactly at the same time of like when you know they had the 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 indian you know trading companies going on but very close to it and so you could really blend those things together um <laughs> Abraham Lincoln vampire hunter. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, uh Tesla Ranger says national treasure. You know, instead of finding the treasure, the PCs would be hiding it. That's a good one. Yeah, um never really thought about PCs like like sticking things back down into the dungeons they came out from or like destroying the the clues that lead to their to uncovering them. <laughs> Pride and prejudice and zombies. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, that you can really take this and go really, uh, really bizarre with it. Really um, take it to another level. And why not? I mean, there were pe people who were against the exploration had the idea that, like, um, zombies and Cthulhu and uh, spreading of disease and stuff like by exploring, you would uncover some dark powers that would spread and you know the 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 uh finding the mummy's tomb and then the mummy taking revenge on you right uh some of them some of these stories were also cautionary tales so you could personify those cautionary tales um of waking up you know sleeping vampire lords or something that were going to spread undead armies through the world or uh finding an ancient artifact that would um, uh, hypnotize a whole population into chanting their way to bring, you know, Cthulhu from the, the, the you know, the comet that's going to, you know, go across the sky or something like that. Um, 
Yeah, um, Scott Post says, these periods of time weren't as long or as cool as they'll be in your game anyway. No need to be a purist. Right, because those time periods were were very short, but hit real hard. You, you know what I mean? Like, it was like, bang, bang, bang. Like, you know, like the Old West was just a thing. You know, Cowboys. I mean, hell, there's a whole game based around it. You know, Deadlands. Um, there are whole games based around the age of piracy. There's whole games. Um, um Legend of Five Rings, a whole based around the entire samurai culture, but mixing them wasn't really, isn't really a role playing thing. And I'm thinking like that would be cool to have an age where all those things happen together, and you could have. I, I just would love the idea of a sailing ship ship where everyone's from someplace different and has their own really cool specialties a gunslinger next to the samurai next to the witch doctor next to the um oracle next to the i don't know viking or something like that i don't know if the vikings wouldn't be there but but you get what i'm saying um zala says what if shaka zulu but he had a had space travel exactly right no one's we're 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 not saying like hey you have to be quote unquote you know, Central European and, and travel to these other places, what if those places traveled to you or you got there and you're like, I didn't know they were going to other dimensions or other worlds or they were traveling themselves. Um, Cowboys versus aliens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not a good movie, but, but not a bad premise. Right. Um, Foolish Kiwi says you could even have things based on local mythos uh, doing a game in uh, Southern North America have, have, Chapacaras, Bigfoot, Wendigos, Thunderbirds. Yeah, I, I understood what you meant. Yeah, I mean, there's so many legends out there. You could draw on them and make them a big thing, right? It's the, you know, the 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 ancient Aztecs, you know, uh, believed in, you know, sacrificing people to to for the gods or something or to prevent. A, a, a total eclipse or what have you you know you have the um indigenous peoples uh american indians that that had their own um all they had their own histories and mythos and you could really draw on them and mix them together what if all those things were real um the ancient sphinxes were real and the, and there was a, a real sphinx that had riddles and you had yourself a cowboy and a ancient victorian standing next to his um you know um African tribal um, guidesman who's like, hey, listen, we need to do these things. You could be a Bedouin, uh, uh, a Bedouin nomad or what have you. And this is now, I'm going to say it so you guys don't have to say it. Um, during these periods of time, there was a shit ton of of racism and hate and and all kinds of oppression. Right? You could still play with that. That's still a gaming thing. You could do a ton, a ton with it because that was a thing, right? The the idea of like um, the 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 European explorer coming back home with his African sidekick and the people like having like the mm, who's here, who's she, they're dirty or whatever, and then knowing that within their own group there's this um, camaraderie, there's this trust, there's this. Now that I know who you are and what you're about, um, we really aren't that much different or we are different, but we're still equal. And then playing with the idea of having this xenophobic mentality everywhere you go, that's that's RPG fuel. And what a great way for us to delve into it, especially if we, you know, kind of hold that bigotry and stuff ourselves. Um, yeah, Scott Post says, not like modern civilization is free of tribalism and bigotry. <laughs> True, very true, right? But you know, we 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 role players are far more open. At least I would hope that we're far more open minded. But that's a trope, right? That is a real trope back then. You know, ladies, eh, stay in the background. You're not anything. And then all of a sudden, they pull out a a spear or a whip or a gun or something, and they like kick ass. And then you you know the guys are sitting back like, whoa, really? I'm in love now. You know what I mean? Like you you could really play up the like how how do you say it dive deep into the stereotypes and then break every one of them you know what i mean like i i'm going to be a quote unquote samurai and i'm going to be all the typical samurai things and then break the trope by interacting with everyone around you and then and then um 
you know what I mean? It's it's kind of weird, but like be a trope and then break the trope at the same time um, uh, by 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 bumping heads with it. Um, Fulish Huey says maybe aliens grab one suitable champion of several cultures and put them to a test. Maybe they don't even know it's a test till the end. Ooh, ooh, kind of cool. Top gunslinger, top swordsman, you know, top person with this fl- uh, whirling dervish. You know what I mean? That'd be kind of cool. Uh, little known fact: the Great Sphinx is a one-to-one scale replica. <laughs> Wow. That would be sweet, though. That would be awesome. That, man. Bruce says, we're going to visit these barbarians and teach them true civilization. Yep. Wait, they have the means to travel to the moon, but they're barbarians? They have a, but they have a spaceship. Yep. Brain explosion. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's the, there was a bit of that, hey, we're going to, we're going to take our culture and, and educate them, bring them into the modern era. And then when those explorers got there, it's like, hmm. Maybe we really don't know what we're talking about. And 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 also it might be the the idea that one culture relies on technology. Hey, we've got maps, we've got Morse code, we we've learned to use firearms or something. And then you get there and then it's like all these um <laughs> techno barbarians are pretty cool too. <laughs> Here you go, Zala. Um the, the there might be the idea of like um there's lost magics so you could really build like um archetypes you know stereotypes of tropes where sure if you want to play a character that's from deepest africa that's got powers of you know spiritualism and voodoo but you don't have access to technology but if you want to play a character that has access to to the technology of its time you can't have magic right each person has their own specialty whether it's spirit mediums, whether it's being an oracle, whether it's being an herbalist, um, an apothecary or something like that. But each person has their own thing. Um, yeah, um, Scott Post is um, built by their most intelligent savage, barbarian scientist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that word barbarian is probably thrown around a little bit too much, right? Um, every Every age had their had their trigger words. I guess barbarian probably was one of them. Dead Man brings up Thundar the Barbarian, which in a weird way, fits in this age of exploration, right? Thundar was a was a barbarian, right? He didn't know anything, completely illiterate, had this magic slash high-tech sword, very uh, Numenera-ish, Ukla, um, Ukla the Mook. Yeah, Ukla the, the Mook, I believe, was his... Uh, his hairy best friend and and sidekick. It was super strong. Didn't know where he came from. The moon was all shattered in the sky, floating floating in the in the sky. And then they um the um <laughs> and uh sorry, I read the chat. Um and, and then uh, there was the the princess that had magic who seemed to be well educated and she could use her powers. I remember her using her. You know, she put her hands above her head and shot a blast at a at a broken down car and it started up. It was like, what kind of magic? You know, is it like techno magic? I don't know. But it was kind of cool to like that. Tesla Ranger says, white man, I have an army. Native leader shrugs. We have a Hulk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? I mean, there there are those things. Ookla the Mook. That show is great. I have the, oh, you have the box set. Man, I got to pick that up. I, I missed that show. Those, those 80s, pulpy, very pulpy 80s show. Um, uh, Space Ghost and uh, Thunder the Barbarian and... Oh, um, what's the one with the dinosaurs, the space dinosaurs? Come on. Um, wow. A triceratops that could shoot rocks out. And it was a dragon that had the lasers out of his um, horns and could breathe fire and had a laser out of his tail. Um, anyway, uh, Zala says, any sufficiently advanced technology is an indistinguishable magic. Yeah, and that is that is so true. We mentioned that before. Oh, the Inhumanoids. That's it. Oh man, I miss those shows. But 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 those shows really harkened back to the this age of exploration, right? The pulp, the literal pulp fiction, not the movie, but the but the pulp era of of um of you know the shadow, the shadow nose, even even the tie with the shadow man with his scarf over his over his face and his and his twin fifty caliber pistols and stuff. Lamont Cranston, I mean that was a thing, right? He traveled the world and 
was taught the dark secrets in men's hearts and then came back to fight evil because he knew what evil was. I mean, that's a thing, you know, Dick Tracy was, a, was another character at that time. Um, that was very pulp action era. Um, you could, if you do some Google searching, there was an artist that drew a ton of female superheroes as tough female, um, like Rosie the Riveter, you know, with the with the the arm up um, in the that era, that that idea of the pinup girl and did a bunch of superheroes that would absolutely fit in that era. I, although I think it would be like 1920s to 50s, which might be a little too soon what we're talking about, but it still fits in that pulp era fiction of, you know, going, you know, um, going to other places and such. such. Um, Foolish Kiwi says, I know it's rules heavy and scary for a lot of folks, but Aces and Eights has a lot of references for old timey Victorian, Western, and Native uh, American stuff you could pull reference from. Yeah, uh, Azala brings up Jonah Hex. For comics, you can go to Jonah Hex. Exactly. I mean, it's the it's like the mixing of I know my world and now I've stepped into another one, right? Not necessarily another uh, physical world where you're going to another dimension, but it's the, it, it's a, uh, kind of what Deadlands is about, right? Hey, I'm a cowboy and I'm in the Wild West and oh, whoa, we've got ghosts and zombies and werewolves and, you know, evil spirits and things like that. Damn, I don't know how to, all I have is a pistol. I'm going to shoot it, right? Um, the Lone Ranger existed at the time. Uh, Scott Post says, Thundar was so good because Jack Kirby was one of the, the creative directors, the mind behind all the cool space stuff in Marvel. That's right. Oh, for cartoons, uh, Azala says, uh, Samurai Jack is fa fantastic. Um, Foolish Kiwi um, um, uh, dittos that. Samurai Jack is a great one. And now, mind you, the hard part, I don't want to say hard part. Many of these pulp action heroes often had very limited um, abilities, but were able to confront the evils of the world anyway, right? So while the gunslingers' pistols might not be able to shoot the ghost, they were able to think of ways to defeat those things. So on one hand, you do there is the idea that, hey, my fist and my kicks and punches, you know, my fisticuffs can't fight this evil thing, but there is a way for us to defeat it. You know, it could be reading a passage out of a book or stopping an ancient chant or or br breaking um an ancient seal or tricking tricking the creature to follow you back into its tomb, um, having it follow you into the sun or, or whatever um, ways to defeat some of these things, almost like a puzzle in many ways. So <laughs> yeah, but thanks Kiwi. Guess you gotta use some of those extra third pillar techniques. Yeah, exactly, right? Hey, I'm, I'm your self-appointed third pillarist, I, I should know. Anyway, um, but yeah, finding out how to, you know, um, instead of killing the ghost, it might be, uh, like Azala says, got to find the ghost remains and put them to rest properly, right? So it may not be, let's punch and kick the ghost. It might be the ghost is not rested yet, and we have to finish the ghost's um, one last act of maybe righting a wrong or finding out that the ghost was killed by a railroad uh, tycoon or something and killed these people. And they're, so now their spirits are restless and they're harming everyone. And so we've got to bring you know, the, the, the railroad baron to, to justice or something. So many of these stories, I think, aren't just about, could you play, not just about punching and kicking, which would be a ton of that. Um, and using plenty, plenty of the of, of the uh, of, of the third pillar stuff, which I'm going to get to in a minute because it's kind of my favorite, and I think you guys will enjoy it because my mind is already going to it. But I think also solving problems without defeating the main baddie, right? Um, righting wrongs, returning things to people, um, saving, uh, you know, saving kidnapped oracles. Um, bringing um, ancient artifacts back to the people it belongs to. Um, like, like we mentioned before, uh, settling the restless dead. Um, 
uh, making sure an ancient prophecy does not come true or making sure a prophecy does come true. Uh, returning maybe someone from an ancient bloodline doesn't realize that they're part of an ancient bloodline and bringing them back to their own uh, culture. Um, someone is um, kidnapped from an ancient culture and portrayed around so-called modern society as a as a um, oddity and freeing them from their enslavement and taking them back to their culture, right? There could be, yeah, returning the village relic. Um, all of those stories I think would fit into this age of exploration, you know? Um, and of course, challenging all of those notions, right? Um, where each PC may have a, you, you know, the, the gunfighter, the gunfighters, um, code of ethic versus the the pirates code of ethic versus the the one from Victorian England's code of ethic versus the samurai's code of ethic and just getting into like little verbal sparring without really destroying the party and then traveling around and having to challenge those those codes of conduct those oaths that people take the way they live and then rethinking about how they deal with another um, ancient culture, whether that culture means um, they send out their children to survive in the wild. And if they come back after a year, they're in, you know, it's like, well, we're not, you're not supposed to send children out by themselves with a, with a blowgun and a net, you know, but maybe this ancient culture does that and accepting that fact, right? Oh, wow. I forgot about that. Um, okay. So Proust says this, of course, um, also means that we'll have chases on top of steam trains and fights on the inside and outside of moving horse carriages. Okay, Prue, thank you for getting ahead of me. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, but for real, for real, absolutely. Um, even finding new homeland for people to settle and, and taming the new lands, right? You know, finding that jungle that's hidden inside a caldera of a, of a um, tall volcanic mountain in a uh, Arctic land or something, right? And settling people down in there. Um, Azala brings up King Kong. Yeah, some idiots brought a monster back from an island, and now it escaped, but it's it's not evil, just scared. Exactly. King Kong's perfect about that, right? Go to an ancient world. There was a, um, a tribalistic land, the dangers of bringing back something. There's someone who wants to make money off of it. They bring it back to modern world. King Kong isn't evil, falls for um, the young woman who's the actress, which is like a, you know, uh, a a substitute for the princess, right? King Kong is being attacked because people are are, are close-minded. King Kong, there's a lot of third pillar stuff. They're climbing up the side of a building. There's airplanes. And so, okay, so Prue, Scott posted, um, uh, says, um, he says, I have a Druid re ready to go for a very game. A friend of mine is running soon. I can't wait. Yeah, um, King, the idea of King Kong, right? And it's not defeating King Kong. That's the real point. It's the it's the not fully understanding the dangers that are involved. And it's almost like saving King Kong because the follow-up to saving King Kong was Mighty Joe Young, right? Mighty Joe Young was the, was the King Kong story was a happy ending. Yeah, we're gonna bring Mighty Joe Young back to his world and back to the tribe that you know, basically worshiped the, you know, this giant um, ape or something like that. Proust says fights on board all means of transportation and dealing with all sorts of weather and terrain new to the explorer's eyes, um, animals and plants. Oh man, yo, so, okay, gotta go down this, go, gotta go down the third pillar uh, pathway, right? Um, fist fights on, like Proust says, fist fights on anything that moves. Fist fights on trains, on barges, on steamships, uh, you know, in storm-tossed seas, on the sides of cliffs, on zeppelins, on the wings of planes, on um, 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 army vehicles driving down the road. You know, you got you to gotta have a ton of minions that you're punching and kicking and throwing under tires and riding on the back of horses and jumping from one horse onto an elephant and, and fighting someone there. Um, uh, going down a, a raging rapid river and you're on a on on kayaks or you, you know whatever um, you you got to fall over a waterfall right you have to have that danger of about to go in a barrel over the edge of a waterfall i mean um just there's always been the montage of the you, you, okay 
follow me on this. The montage of the Explorer has the, the old map, and you always see the dotted line and the plane fly from one place to another, and then they land in this new world, and the new world has something going on there, right? Like they leave, they leave New York and they land in an airport and you always see them walking through the, 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 the most desolate desert or the, the, a, a blizzard or torrential rains or the deepest jungle, you know, um, diving under the oceans or diving into a, um, climbing down and or playing in ropes down into a pit that's the deepest anyone has ever gone, or going into in ancient caves or tombs and having to light torches and things. And so having all those things happen around you and making it very manic, running across rooftops and, and having um, chases through bazaars, um, all that kind of stuff, you definitely have to have, throw that kind of stuff in there. Um, uh, Azal says, here's another factor we haven't thought of, diseases. Yeah, there's always diseases, and especially when people spread around, when you're when you've been closed off from another culture, diseases spread. Hell, that's how um half the people get sick getting on airplanes, right? You're you're mixing your uh your diseases with other people, and you, everyone else be is, is a carrier for disease other people catch, even though maybe you don't show so sim show symptoms. Um, Foolish Kiwi says maybe there's a force that's more morally gray, a shapeshifter population or something that wants to siphon resources. Etc. from humanity and allowing it and helping them cover the truth will allow peace but also hurt humanity as a whole whereas refusing will cause war but will be better for the world over overall if you win um there's always the there's a bit of noir when it comes to the age of exploration right it's do you it's like choosing the lesser of two evils and understanding what it may be right because okay let's think of um indiana jones the lost ark right at the end of the movie indiana's like don't look at it evil guys open up the ark ark shoots out electricity the ark kills everyone closes back up they take it they stick it into a warehouse right but you never really found out whether what how, how can i say this are there any just individuals that should have been able to open up the Ark? Um, what was it about the Ark that made it so uh, special and good for humanity if it caused such damage? And then why hide it away in a warehouse where no one's ever gonna see it again, right? There was a reason it, the, 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 the tablets existed in the first place and the Ark hid them. So there is this idea of like, do we let them live, don't we? And that's where we come back with some of the PCs, right? Maybe you play a PC who's been bitten by a vampire, and so your character's fighting with a bloodlust, but you're also part of the group. And I, I love the idea of like internal gray and then external gray as well, um, where like the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, I'm effective as being Mr. Hyde because I'm this big, brutal person that can kill people, but I'm also dangerous to other people around me but I'm also a scientist who's trying to study um, alchemical formulas maybe to help people in their mental afflictions, right? Um, yeah, <laughs> Prue says, yes, going down a waterfall is now on my PC's bucket list. Sounds fun. I don't know how fun that would be. Maybe going over the edge, but after that, the first heartbeat is like, no. Um, Prue says, oh, strange parasites. I love the thought of mind altering parasites for RPG fodder. Ooh, invasion of the body snatchers nasty foolish kiwi says exactly maybe the art could have saved the world even if the bad guys wanted to use it right we never see that's the thing we never found out was it because they were the bad guys we don't know and so you could have these these gray areas where like you're mentioning um you know you could have shapeshifters that are like have invaded humanity like like well the a vampire is, is a perfect example right vampires feed on the blood of humanity but if they are quote unquote good or trying to do good things or they just want to live is it okay to let them feed off innocent people if they feed on them and don't kill them you could say well okay it's, it's fine but if they're spreading disease you're like wait a minute that's yeah, that's not right. You know, um, and do do you kill someone and maybe you 
maybe the PCs befriend the ancient an ancient vampire who helps them stop some other evil. But then it's like, well, we need to kill you because we we can't let you live. And then maybe that vampire is like, I understand you need to hunt me down, but you know, I, I still want to live. So give me an hour and then you can come after me, right? And maybe the PCs start getting like um the exploration part of it, they start collecting, and I, I say collecting, but they start contacting and collecting these different individuals and, and cultures around the world and finding out that there's this weird balance. They're like, they're, they're maintaining this weird balance. Um, yeah, P Sto Dead Man of Storytellers says the PC vampires feed off of criminals. Exactly, like the, the PCs could be the bad guys, right? Um, in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, they hinted, not hint, the, the graphic novel goes far deeper than the movie, but the point was, every one of those characters was basically air quotes evil, right? But on their own, taking their actions, or even the show Penny Dreadful, those characters committed evil acts, um, whether in the past or currently. Uh, many, many characters have redemption arcs, right? I was a, a you're, you could play a PC that used to be a serial killer, like Jack the Ripper. You could make a, uh, um, Dr. Frankenstein was um, dealing with the dead and created, you know, in Penny Dreadful, created, brought back to life these other Frankenstein's monsters, like, uh, and l let them loose on the world, created Lilith who became bizarre. There was a uh, Dorian Gray who had no moral code, you know, was all about pleasure. Um, you have many people who are like, like fighting their own inner demons and they, so the PCs could be literally understand that they are the evil force in this world, stopping other evil forces, knowing that they're like going into danger as a form of martyrdom. Um, in, in essence, I'm going to stop stop evil until evil kills me. In many ways, um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Foolish, uh, foolish uh, Kiwi said they're like a parasitic force field against worse terrors, and and that's the deal, right? Like, let's say, I mean, hell, the story of um, the Last Samurai um, was in the Wild West, killed a bunch of evil, you know, in innocent indigenous peoples, decides to leave that life, goes to ancient Japan, gets is ordered basically, hey, you did such a good go job killing those innocent people. We got some Japanese you could kill, um, innocent people you can kill. Then gets accepted into their culture and decides to to absorb their culture, reluct reluctantly or not. And then um, martyrdom comes in, in a way, tries to sacrifice himself for his own evils, right? It's the, it's the I'm going to redeem myself until I get killed doing it. You know, maybe I could, maybe I can do good works to fight my way into heaven, kind of thing, and and that would be kind of cool because it, instead of an alignment system, the PCs might be performing evil acts for the service of good, so that the good goodly people don't have to do those things. Whether it's like torturing evil creatures or making sacrifices that other people don't want to do, like 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 you guys, um, Dead Man Storyteller says vampires feeding off of criminals, right? It's wrong to murder people, but if they're criminals, you know, F them. Um, <laughs> a foolish Kiwi says, sure, we feed on you, but have you ever seen what a pit fiend does to a town? Exactly, exactly. Um, Azala says, the Iron Kingdom has something like that. Old witch opens a portal to let nightmares and other terrors in, but that's the whole, that holds back even worse stuff. And again, we can pull from the legends of specific cultures and bring back those things like the Wendigo is is a very specific or I can't pronounce the other one Chapa Chapagara I can't whatever the Wendigo um the Wendigo is a specific evil or horror and you could play with that um in terms of when the characters explore the world they can each explore their own these own cultural terrors and find out that the world isn't as they isn't always as they seem. You know, the Wendigo, if the Wendigo Chapa Car Cha Chupa Cabra. Chupacabra? Chupacabra? What a Chupacabra? Uh I, I don't know. <laughs> guys, you're just gonna make force me to, to the br brutalize these these pronunciations. You guys know I don't know anything. Um, but the point being is that you 
each of maybe each of these ancient cultures is specific specifically holding back a horror that if it were to move from one place to another would be even worse right so maybe the native americans indigenous peoples in the us are making sure that the wendigo does not go to deepest africa or northern europe or or mongolia or something like that because they have their own horrors and if they were to mix it's like bam um yeah, uh, Azala says you had it. Yeah, I had it, and then I ruined it again. Um, <laughs> uh, Foolish Kiwi says, to be honest, that's a more realistic version of good and evil. Um, fighting, uh, fighting your own inner demons builds character. Uh, as a response to that, to be honest, it's more realistic version of good and evil. And he's exactly right. No one, no one is good or evil. They are a victim of their circumstance. And I would love to play that where you can play like the. Uh, the inner versus outer turmoil of what's going on. There are very few game systems that really delve into um, how to roll, how to mechanically associate your inner and outer things. Although, uh, for example, fate has the idea of um, of complications and um, and GM intrusions in um, Cipher System Numenera. So. As a GM, you could say, okay, I'm going to give you this Benny, this bonus, whether it's a die or a boon or, or plus five or a free action or a special ability or something. But in return, you have to, you are now um, overcome with whatever your limitation is, whether it's um, nightmares, whether it's a certain fear, whether it's um, a bloodlust or, or berserk rage or... Um, you, uh, a evil spirit inhabits your body that keeps them um, talking to you. One of your multiple personalities comes out and and dominates you. You have memory loss. Um, you suffer something from an ancient curse that that makes you turn blind or mute or change into another creature temporarily, like you know, to a uh, to a, a wolf or something. Like right, like you could have those GM intrusions where the GM is like, guess what? If you, I will, I will give you a benefit if you allow this this thing to happen to you that either takes the character out of your hands or forces you to act in some way or to act on some kind of imperative that's part of your character. And I think that would be really cool. So we're getting to the um, to the edge of this. So I, I think we did a really good job selling this age of exploration. And to, to summarize, really, um, this age of exploration is basically taking all these micro ages that happened in generally the same time period, I'm going to say within 300 years of each other, between say the 16 to 1900s or 17 to 1900s or whatever, but some of them actually literally did overlap and historically you could actually look up those things. So we're talking about the age of piracy, uh, the age of uh, Victorian era, Gothic um, England. We're talking about the age of samurai, um, the age of... of, of uh, India and Mongolia and, and Eastern Asia and deepest Africa and the the um, American Old West and Civil War and all of those things all at the same time and mixing them together and much of pulp fiction not the movie but the the literary sense of pulp fiction really dealt with with heroes and their allies who all seem to come from different eras we thought we we brought up thunder the barbarian we brought up doc savage we brought up um a league of extraordinary gentlemen people from all walks of life come together some of them questionable backgrounds all of them having a we brought penny dreadful all of them having a a shadowy past but all of them together no understanding that maybe they have more in common than everyone else in society and protecting society from the evils of the world. And of course, having stories where punching evil in the face isn't all, everything. Although punching min minions in the face is actually kind of cool, but also solving problems without punching it in the face, um, settling evil, closing portals, um, returning ancient peoples or finding a new home for them to live, uh, freeing enslaved peoples, fighting bigotry. Um, PCs who hold on to bigotry and find out that the world isn't as simple as they think it is. Um, use, using bigotry and racism as RPG fuel. Um, you know, a lot of racism, bigotry, um, sexism, um, uh, social 
a strata of people, you know, lower class people being pushed down and, and nobility and rich people being pushed up and not being able to, to come out of your own uh, social social strata and stuff like that. Um, Scott Post says, uh, visit your local museums for inspiration of both the collection and the collectors. Yeah, uh, Foolish Kiwi brings up a shadowy past, but a special skill from it. And I, I love that idea, being demon touched, but now you have the ability to fight demons or bring bring about their powers. Maybe you, you have hypnotic eyes or something. Um, in, in many, uh, Azala says, Old West stuff, find um, Jim Bowie's knife or Walker's dual cult walkers. Um, uh, yeah, dude, you could you could make them the idea that ancient artifacts and modern, like modern day artifacts, are a th could be a thing. Um, Smith and Wesson, could, there could be literally you could meet literal literally Smith and Wesson, or or um, uh, what's the there's a a. A, a, a mansion built by uh, someone. Um, oh, I can't. And it's named after. Um, it's named after a person who created these rifles. Um, anyway, anyway, wow, my my brain's going. Anyway, there was a horror movie made made after it, and this woman who um, got rich off of the money that was made by this person who designed all these weapons. Winchester. Thank you. Wow. Yes, the Winchester. It was a movie. I heard the movie wasn't very good, but there is an actual Winchester house. And the woman was went kind of insane building this house, um, all these multiple rooms to keep the ghosts and the horrors away, um, which meant that it's like modern artifact research or discovery. You know what I mean? So, so there's a ton of stuff you can you can discover when it comes to collectors and things like that. And Warehouse 13 had uses that idea. Yeah, um, and you can actually go to the Winchester house. Um, and using the idea from, what is it, um, Warehouse 13, and uh, there was another one. Um, there was a Friday the 13th television show that had nothing to do with, with uh, nightmares, but it did have to do with ancient artifacts that got out. So all that combined together basically comes into the fact that there's a ton of stuff you can mine making using archetypes using stereotypes and then breaking those stereotypes um i think would be really cool in a strange way uh a generic role playing game or like a superhero role playing game might fit with this giving people abilities maybe modifying your 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 you know your fifth edition a little bit with a little bit of technology some firearms rules um that kind of thing, uh, e even like subbing, like instead of crossbows, they're just used as pistols and just do it that way. So you can make things simple without unbalancing something. Um, uh, using some of those uh, short term and long term insanity rules. Um, got a plug again, we have despair rules. So you could do some of that um, being mentally stressed as well as physically stressed. And so, yeah. So anyway, guys, uh, thank you for joining me. Today we talked about the age of exploration. Um, Tomorrow we, we may go into like a, a world war era and um, and then we start going into the future and technology that way. All right, baby. All right, baby. Love you. Yeah, <laughs> another cold day. We'll see. We'll see if we'll have mail delivery today. Yeah. Um, uh, Scott Post. You want to try to start it? All right. If if it doesn't, don't worry about it. I'll come down there and, and get it started. Sorry, guys. Yeah, it's it's so cold that it's you know negative teens. All right, I'll fix it. I know, but the lights are gonna be on. I know. That's why I'm gonna I'm gonna come down right now. Th thank you, baby. Um, yeah. So, sorry, guys. <laughs> um, anyway, guys, I will see thee later. Um, negative. 20s, negative teens, I think today, wind chill or whatever. Hopefully by late this afternoon, it's supposed to come out of here in central Ohio, come into the teens maybe, but whatever. Um, but yeah, Foolish Kiwi says, I love the World War era. Yeah, we'll, we'll go into World War. Um, I know World War One is different than World War Two, but there were tons of wars. But we, the idea of doing this was actually started from talking about technology, which we hadn't even really hit upon. So we got to go into some technological eras for world building and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, um, yeah. So anyway, guys, thank you very much for joining me. I'm DBJ. I got to go get my car started because it is freaking freezing out there. I will see you later. <laughs>